everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mel, I'm an Uruguayan neuroscientist and on the side of my PhD I have this YouTube channel in which I interview scientists from all over the world. And today's guest takes us all the way to Helsinki, Finland. Her name is Janika Ruska and she has a very interesting story. She started as a biotech engineer, she worked for 10 years also in the industry and in academia and then she found out her true passion was neuroscience and then she enrolled as a master's student in Finland to achieve this goal. But she's also a sex counselor and mixes all this expertise that she has in a new project of hers that is called Hack Your Sexuality, in which she uses all this knowledge into making some tools to help people. And she has a YouTube channel in which she makes videos about student life, about neuroscience, about sexuality and different topics. So it's a very interesting mix of things that I personally don't know many people that are doing this, so it's really cool to have her here. Hi Yannika, thank you so much for giving your time for this, it's a pleasure to have you here. Hi, super nice to be here, thank you for inviting me. So, tell us a bit about your story. As you can see, I'm wearing a sweater. I'm living in Finland and it's currently super, super cold here. Also really, really dark, so I'm trying to survive. I still enjoy the country. Would be nice to have more sun though. But anyways, before going to my background and what I'm doing in my life with my studies, I want to say to you that I hope that this video or this interview and uh, kind of the things what I'm talking here may inspire you or take the pressure out from you. So I'm the person who have changed from the career to another. So you don't need to know immediately when you are young or even more like older uh, that what you want to do, you can always change. So I think I ended up to science kind of, it was an accident. Somehow my road went there. I was really into biology when I was younger and I was dreaming to become a brain surgeon. That was my dream during that time. But I didn't know exactly that what else I could be. What are all the options available there? So I applied to the school where I would have as much options as much much possible. So I ended up to apply to the school called Metropolia. It's University of Applied Sciences, so technical school. And uh, I did my bachelor's there. So I graduated as a biotech engineer. The actual name for the uh, degree was biotechnology and food engineering. And some of us just focused to food engineering and some of us uh, biotech. So I chose biotech because I knew that I'm really into kind of human health things. But you can, like from that degree, you can choose really, really many things. Now you're studying neuroscience, but in between there were some years that you were working on other stuff. Can you tell us what kind of stuff did you do? So I worked for example in uh, Red Cross uh, Blood Service, their lab there, and also Orion, it's a big pharma company in Finland, so I, I chose these kind of things. And somehow at some point I just ended up to uh, work in academic research, so I worked in University of Helsinki. Uh, they have many many labs there and I ended up to this lab which is doing a breast cancer research. The project where I was involved, it was mainly focusing the environment where we culture the samples. So when we get the patient sample, we put it to the culture, give it kind of food, all the supplements and things, and it will grow there. There are many uh, subtypes of breast cancer. So when we get one subtype, we want to that it, the sample will stick as the same subtype as it is. So we uh, did the uh, research how the environment effect for that, so kind of creating the correct environment. And that's important because, of course, then the drugs we are testing if they could treat the breast cancer, if the cancer is still the same or at least really, really similar, 
then the trucks are like they are giving the correct results so it's super super important that they will stick as the same anyway i did all kind of lab work there and at some point i realized that yeah i really enjoyed the topic but it's not my passion exactly and um, to me it's really important that i'm passionate about the topic because i also noticed that when you are working in academic research you make these questions and you might have guesses how things work and then you work really really hard and then you might fail so you need to get energy from somewhere to continue still even if you would fail multiple times you continue 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 until you get the result and that i think the passion is the thing like from there you get the energy Yes, as someone that is working in academia, I can 100% verify that. <laughs> it's totally true. Okay, and now, so you, you have this realization, and now what, like, how do you, like, move on from that and find your new passion? So I started to think, what is my passion? I met multiple people and discussed, um, like, listen to myself what I'm really enjoying, what I'm fascinated about. And um, I ended up to neuroscience, which is funny because I thought that when I was 15, as you uh, remember, I mentioned, I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. So now with the research, I, I found that yes, neuroscience is the thing. Um, it took 10 years to find my topic, but I'm super happy I found it and I applied to University of Helsinki, it's also here in, here in Finland and um, I, I'm now I'm currently doing my master's there with the neuroscience. I also um, did part of my studies in Hong Kong, so I, I went there as an exchange student during that time and I find that was really important. This is the one mention here that sometimes these kind of uh, possibilities are important during your career development. Yes, better late than never. <laughs> and uh, so within neuroscience, what kind of stuff do you do? Because also it's very broad. I figured that also finding that topic, that passion within neuroscience is also a, a journey on its own. I'm super happy about the topic, um, but because the topic is so fascinating, I found so many interesting questions. I was a bit lost beginning of my studies, what I should do, what is the thing I should focus, because you can focus so many things. You can be interested in signaling pathways, topics like Alzheimer or Parkinson's, mental disorders, memory or emotions, cancers in the brain, so many different things. And how did you narrow it down? Do you have any tips? So what I did was that I took part of so many lectures during the autumn. I was really tired, even it was really fascinating. But I took the notes, uh, which things gets my attention. And I collected those and I noticed that, okay, there comes, to, comes some kind of picture about the topic I'm interested in. Uh, first, I was thinking that, yeah, these mental disorders, these are really fascinating and they are, but there are still so many things which can affect that and still so many things you can focus in your research. Um, so I went a bit more further, I found some brain areas which I'm really interested in, like amygdala. And I found the lab, because we need to do a practical training in our school. Uh, and from there you can also continue your thesis if you want. So I ended up to apply to this uh, research group in here, which uh, is doing the research with anxiety disorder. So I think many of you are also familiar with this anxious feeling that you get kind of nervous, maybe panic-like feeling, uh, but when it continues and you start to avoid things, then it's more like disorder. One type of uh, anxiety disorder is that you start to avoid social situations, so you're afraid of those. And amygdala is a well-known brain area which uh, is activated during the, these fearful situations. So these kind of things, and the research group is focusing more to genetics uh, with that. 
I'm so happy because there are so many options in this inside this anxiety disorder where you can focus and you can combine so many things like you can combine maybe memory or sleep if you sleep badly what happens uh, to these kind of disorders anxiety disorder it's a really really wide topic uh, it's included panic disorders OCD uh, post-traumatic stress disorder different phobias so so many things are included to that that you can imagine how many people are suffering from those and the passion what I have towards this topic it's that uh, I feel it's important to understand this more because like the medicine we are at the moment having some of them we have found, found kind of accidentally so they are not well known why they might help for this exact patient so it's really really important to understand uh, what are, for example, the environmental factors which affect uh, that these people might get the, these kind of disorders. So the passion comes, of course, helping people and from that point of view. Yes, this topic is very interesting. It's also very relevant, very important. There's many people suffering of these disorders, so it's really, really cool that there's people like you working on them. Before I change the subject, because I'm going to ask you about your other endeavors, uh, maybe we have students watching that they are also thinking about all these things, struggling to find a path, a topic. Do you have any special like kind of round message about this for them? Just try to try to listen to yourself, talk with different people. Uh, you have a lot of people around you who might have gone through the similar things and you might get some ideas from there. So know yourself, uh, know your uh, talk with your friends, that's important. But you don't need to know everything at the moment. But you can try and maybe try something else later on. You don't need to decide everything immediately and you are allowed to change your passion. And keep your mind even a bit open for different possibilities. Yes, that's very nice advice. And now I want to ask you about your other project. So I know that you are studying to become a sex counselor. You are integrating it with neuroscience and all these other knowledges that you have and that you have this web page that is called Hack Your Sexuality and also an Instagram page in which you put like a lot of information and tools. Can you tell us a bit about that? Like what is this project about, the motivations or what kind of stuff people can find in these resources that you are making? So yes, I actually graduated as a sexual counselor really recently, so a few months ago. And that's a long story how I ended up to study that. But if I try to summarize uh, where my passion comes from, one reason is that when I'm working with people, I'm more close to people. And when I hear their stories and maybe some problems, I might get some research question ideas from them. So I'm not living in some kind of research bubble and close my eyes from the world, but I'm actually interacting with people. Uh, so that's, that's helping what are the things where people might need help also on, on research. But of course, the main reason is that I really enjoy and feel good about that I can help people. I really appreciate how people, how people are able to ask help, open up, to trust me that, um, that I'm able to walk with them uh, and just help them during their journey when they are doing the work. And the topic, what comes to sexuality, it's so wide topic. It's yes, sex is included, but also gender roles, gender identities, intimacy, erotism, reproduction, so, so many things. My favorite topics are probably, there are so many, but uh, body image is one. So how people see and think about their body. I have worked with uh, people with eating disorder, but also I can see that so many people uh, are having a negative thoughts about their body. So I really enjoy to help with that. The other one is um, people with emotional scars or traumatic experiences. Those are my uh, kind of favorite topics. But then I can see that self-esteem 
And also the communication skills are maybe the main topics with every, every client or, or almost every client, I would say. Also the communication with themselves. And for that, I have actually created a project called Hack Your Sexuality. So I have Instagram account for that. I have shared quite a lot of information there, so I recommend to check that. But I also have the homepage for it, hackyoursexuality.com. Just go there and subscribe to the newsletter, so you will get the updates. So my plan is to write articles there and to combine also neuroscience to the sexuality. Future things. What comes to that project? Of course, uh, clients, one-to-one uh, -one clients. That's one thing what I'm doing at the moment. That I will continue, continuing also to sharing the information. That's one of my passions to talk about it, to share information that as many people as possible can get that. And let's see. I'm, I'm thinking that I will at some point have the workshops or webinars or some courses. So I'm that kind of person that I enjoy to have uh, multiple projects ongoing. Uh, I get the energy from there. That maybe is the one reason why I'm also having this another project. So I'm having my YouTube channel. It's on my name, so Janne Karouska. And there I'm sharing my private life also um, while I'm studying. So all the struggles what I'm facing there but also the topics what I'm learning. So I'm trying to summarize everything what I have learned or the most interesting topics. And also I'm sharing the research questions because I feel that I get those all the time. So I enjoy to share those and maybe someone will catch one of them and then continue to work with that. So that's, that's the aim for that project. If you ever get some really really good idea and you need some help for that you can always contact me i have took part of um, other people's other projects so i really enjoy that too wow that's very interesting i think i don't know anyone that is using all this knowledge in order to to apply it to, to this field so it's really cool to have the opportunity of interviewing you and that you tell us all about this world and the kind of things that can be done here. And those were all the questions I had today. So thank you very much, Yannicka, for your time, for sharing all this cool stuff with us. I'm super, super thankful um, about this interview and your time you gave to me. Thank you. Bye. Yes, bye. And thank you for your attention. If you like this video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, to give thumbs up, to leave supporting comments. I also have a Patreon account that helps growing the channel, but also gives jobs to people in Latin America that help with the editing, with the creation of the videos. We can make more videos, faster, better quality of more topics with your help. And don't forget to check out the channel because there's many topics, there's many things for different tastes, so probably you find something that you like. And bonus points if you speak Spanish because there's even more content in Spanish. See you in the next video. Bye bye.